Today, I'm talk, going to talk about the differences between men and women. I'm not going to talk about the differences on sex anymore because that one has put me into enough trouble. I want to escape that. I, I think I've, a word is enough for the wise. I think I've spoken enough about sexuality. Anybody that needs it will go and learn from it. But uh, now I think it's time to talk about other differences between men and women. Otherwise, people would think something is fishy there with the sexualities of the men are happy, women are not happy. We've got to do something else. <laughs> so, what is the topic of today? What you need to know about differences between men and women. What you need to know about differences between men and women. Okay, we are going to enjoy today, nevertheless. I personally believe that it's not just sexuality that we need to know. We need to know more than sexuality. Uh, let's talk about other things that concern men and women. All right, one of the differences that I want to talk about today is that men normally sit, the, one of the reasons I believe God told uh, Abraham to listen to his wife, because some women, some men think that it is just the, it's just the other way, and just the women need to listen to the men. But, you know, there was a scripture in the Bible where the Bible says that, you know, listen to your wife. And there are another uh, scriptures where the Bible said to obey one another. So one of the reasons I believe men need to uh, listen to their wives is because of the point I want to make today. And that point, at least the first one I'm making, that point is that men see in general, they see the general picture of things, why women say in details. I'm going to show you a picture to, to help communicate that. Let me also correct what I'm reading here first. So, let me show you this picture here. So that you'll be able to see what I mean by men and women see differently. And because of what we see, we need to help each other. God puts us together so that we'll be able to help and assist, assist each other. Now, I'm sure you can see that picture there, right? That picture is an illustration of how men and women see. We see the general stuff, right? We see just the main things, the most important points. Those are the ones we see. But between the big points that we are seeing, <laughs> the ladies are seeing the invisible lines in between, the thin lines in between the big points. So we are seeing the big points and she is seeing between the lines as well. So many other points that we are not seeing. That is how life is. is all. In life, men are not seeing a lot of things. And I want to appeal to the ladies, please make it all crucified also. Don't be in a hurry to kill the man. Don't be in a hurry to condemn the man. He is not seeing a lot of things that you are seeing. Now, again, a lot of women look at the man and say, he's just uh, insensitive. He's just not sensitive. He's not loving. He's not caring. How is it that he's not seeing this thing? 
How is it that it's not responding? How is it that it's not loving? How is it that you cannot see that? But this is so clear. <laughs> why is he pretending? Or why is it that he's passing by? So, you ladies, if you have just made your hair and you've just done a new color in your hair and the guy just passed by and didn't notice, now you know why. He's not seeing it. Or maybe you just put on a new dress. You just put on a new dress and he didn't even see the difference that you changed your dress. It's not because he saw it. He didn't see it. The man is not seeing the details. The man is not seeing the details. He is seeing the most important things in life. Somebody comes, a, a, a man comes back from work and the woman is expecting that he sees, he should notice that she has removed the, the painting from, the, from one wall and has put another painting there so that he will, he will see some difference and be happy. <laughs> he didn't see anything. The only person who is happy is she herself. <laughs> the man is not seeing anything. The man is not seeing anything. And it's, but the problem with the man is that even though he's not seeing most of the things, but let me tell you what, he's sure he's seeing everything. He's very sure. Even though he's not seeing anything, he's not seeing half of the thing that is happening in this world. But the man is very certain that he is the one who is saying. <laughs> that is the woman that is not seeing what's happening. <laughs> he's very certain that he's seeing everything that he needs to see. In fact, he's thinking that there's nothing there again that he's not saying. <laughs> Ola Yinkashiu is asking me, so what is wrong with their eyes now? <laughs> Another one is saying, waiting, men don't get eyes. <laughs> is man no, is man not having eyes? That's what they're asking. What's the problem with their eyes? Well, what can I tell you? The only thing I can tell you is this. You see that photograph that I showed you, how men are built. I'm going to show you, show you again. You by, you by, you by, by the time you, I finish with you people about the difference between men and women, you'll be sleeping, you'll be seeing my photograph. <laughs> In your dream, you'll be seeing this diagram here. <laughs> You will see this diagram every day of your life. <laughs> you will never forget this diagram again. Look at this diagram again now. Now, by now, you should know where the woman is and where the man is. This is the man here with the straight line. Now, the man is, is not connected. This is the mind of the man. This is the man. The yellow is the, is the body of the man. The man is not co connecting... This thing is seen with his eyes in the yellow. He's not connecting it automatically with what is happening in his heart. And he's not connecting it with what is happening in his spirit. I mean, in his emotions and feelings. And he's not connecting it with what is happening in his, in his mind. So everything is seen, everything separately. But the woman, see how rich a life is. See how rich a life is. See how rich the life of the woman is. Can you see it? What a rich picture she's seeing in her, in her world. This is how rich the, the life of the woman is. Our only job, bread or white and black. You see our own life, the men's life, is just white and black. It's also in color, but you see them separate. They are not intermingled. They are not so rich life. See what the woman is enjoying, eh? <laughs> see the rich life the woman is enjoying so colorful but the complication here is that all these things that the woman is having all the rich something they are intermingled so that is where our advantage comes our own is separated so we can, even though we are not seeing everything but at least 
we are saying clear, clear. We are not confused. But because they are saying everything all mashed together, they are confusing. They could confuse it. They might not be able to take decision clearly. Is it red that I'm saying or yellow that I'm saying? But for the man, he just says, ah, why, why are you asking? Can't you see? It's yellow now. It's red now. Or it's purple. Can't you see? To us, it's very clear. We are seeing the life very, very clearly. We are seeing clarity like no man's business. But the woman is seeing that, but it's like it's yellow. But can't you see the other light yellow beside it? <laughs> it's like it's red. But apart from the red, can't you see several other red color related issues that are there? But we men, that's why men are the ones who take decisions at all. Or it is easier for men to take decisions. And that's why God made the men the head of the family. Because they see clearly. They see clarity. They see, no. They just see clear, black and white kind of way. You see the way we see here. That's the way we see too. That's the way we look at life. Everything clear and everything standing alone. So it helps us to take, to see clearer, clearer and to take quick decision and faster decision. But the woman, before she takes decision, she's lost in the process. Can you see? She, she's going around the circle, and before the decision is taken, she's lost inside. She's totally lost. So, <laughs> not that women are confused, but it's not as easy for the woman. Okay, somebody is hanging on to the, the word confused that I said. You know, but I don't mean they are confused like uh, insultive. I'm just saying it's blurring to the eyes of the woman sometimes. It's not so you know, black and white like with the men. So now, thanks to that picture there, you'll be able to understand this picture. Thanks to that picture, you'll be able to understand this picture. Because everything is coming to play in the life of the woman. Everything is coming to play. In our own case, you remember the yellow, that is the body of the man. The man is only using his body here. And maximum is using his body and his mind. So what he's seeing with his eyes, is sending it to his mind. So he's saying this is yellow. And he's going, the information is just going to his mind. That yellow he's seeing is not affecting his feelings. That yellow and the red thing, green he's seeing is not affecting his emotions. But the woman looking at the colors... She is experiencing what she's seeing. So here, why she's seeing so much is because everything she is seeing with all the four organs. Let me say this. Let me show you this thing again. Can you see this picture again? Okay, when man looks, what we are seeing is we are just seeing the colors. So there are two. Okay, you see this is the man, the body. This is the heart, this is the emotion, and this is the, uh, okay, this is the body of the man, this is the emotion, I and mean, this is the heart, these are the emotions and feelings, and this is the mind of the man. When a man is looking at these four pictures now, at these blocks, he's using his body, his eyes to see what is here, and he's sending that information from his, mind, from his eyes to his brain, to his mind. These are the only two things that are operational. He's only using his mind, his eyes, his eyes and his mind. Right? He's only see, using his eyes and his mind. But the woman, when she's using her eyes, her body to see, he's sending information to her mind, but he's not just sending information to her mind. That thing she's seeing is also sending information to her feelings, and send the information to her emotions, and send the information to her heart. Everything she's feeling, whatever she's seeing here, is affecting her here, here, here. She's feeling everything. She's experiencing everything. But you will not believe it. But we, so if she's looking with her eyes, with the yellow, the information she's seeing here is going all through her system, all through these things. But we, we don't even feel anything. So, you could ask, a man could ask, a woman could ask, a, a woman could ask a man and say, 
What do you feel when you look at this? My color now, for example, look at my color, red color. Do you know what the man feels when the man, the man that is two of you are washing, or husband and wife are washing and looking at me and see me in this rich red color? The man just you sees with his eyes the color. Oh, red! Oh, it's so red. That's it. He just sees that it's red. Oh, it's such a big red. Wow. But the woman, she's not just seeing that it's red, oh. <laughs> she's seeing the red and she's feeling something. She's either feeling warm, she's either feeling, uh, no. She's associating this thing she's seeing with some other feelings and with some other things. So it's affecting her, it's sending her messages. <laughs> Somebody said, so men are col colorblind. <laughs> so the women feel what they see. And then they find it easier to associate what they see with many other things at the same time. I think we have to ask the Pastor Shorunke now, Mrs. Shorunke, to explain how that works with the woman. Why we just see with the eye. We just see what we are seeing, that's all. <laughs> we don't see any detail or any association or feeling anything. Do you have to feel? We don't feel anything. Yeah, we don't. We don't feel anything. You tell us about. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm listening to you talk about um, how colorful we are from even the inside, and how you know we are into the details. You know, if you call us all now to describe your red, it's not just gonna be red. Oh, I mean, okay. I would say. <laughs> It's more on the orange side, okay. you know, and somebody else might say it's more on the, you know, cherry side and so on. Yeah, um, I, she got, she got, is writing something here that is blood red. You see, see, some people say blood red, some will say but orange that, Does that give you any feeling or any The colors? Colors? No, yeah, and this one also, when you look at it, yes. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Colors uh, can mean all kinds of things. If you look at us carefully, um, especially, you know, in the Yoruba tribe where we wear a lot of different colors as women, uh, we will call for pink. And maybe that's the reason why when they're doing what they call B, somebody just goes ahead and buys the pink. Because if you call for pink, pink you <laughs> you're going to see all kinds of pink. You know, so it's just one of those gifts that we have for instance i think it's useful uh when a woman has a home she can decorate that home make it comfortable make it feel like a home you want to come back to due to the fact that we are more into the details you know we can organize very well we are looking at what you know someone can trip over we're looking at things that can be moved around easily we're looking at a lot of details the men may have the suggestion that let's build the house, you know, build the house. But when it comes to what's going to be in the house, it's more better that women do because they would take time out. They would do the research, you know, what kind of chairs, what kind of colors, where the curtains coming from and so on and so forth. So I think that that's a, a, a gift that we have, you know, that um, helps with... Uh, you know, the relationship between man and woman. Does it affect <laughs> your family life? Do you people notice any, do you see things in the family any differently, whereby the lady sees things and you just talk in general terms? Yeah, you're right. Uh, really in our married life, I just noticed that I'm just exactly like that. I say black and white. <laughs> So when it comes to details, like, I'll give you an example. I think it was 1998. We wanted to build a house. So we got the piece of land. So I just told the builders, I said, listen, whatever my wife tells you, do it. 
and every day she would go to the place where the construction is. So I didn't see the house until it was finished. <laughs> So every day when I come back from work, I'll say, honey, how is the building going? She just say, oh, very well, very well. It's going very good. So my, my thinking is that one day it's going to be finished. I just go to work. <laughs> but when I saw the house, I was amazed how big it is, how they pay attention to details, how the curtains were matched with the couch. And I was like, honey, you did this on what budget? And that's another thing. If I was supposed to do it, I would have paid way more than what she paid for the house. And she was very detailed. She made sure that when they don't do the insulation right, she's right there telling them, ah, ah, tear that wall. I want to see the insulation wow. inside. And th that's it. That's a gift that they have. They just pay particular attention to details. Like uh, our living room. She wanted to paint it two colors, pink and green. So she brought the palette to me. I said, just speak. You know, to me, just say, no, no, no. That green is not good. The lighter green will match well with it. I was like, I don't see it. But when they finished painting it, man, it was beautiful. So you are absolutely right. I personally, I know about myself. My wife is very intuitive. So I just let her handle details. And she will do a perfectly good job at the budget. I, I might have spent ten dollars. She'll spend one dollar, and she'll tell me, "Here's the rest of the nine dollars." I said, "Really? How did you do it?" She said, "Well, your wife is wise." So, what they also have is intuition. You know, because they are so detailed. Sometimes I'm doing a business deal, and somebody is sitting in front of me lying to me, but she gets it. Wow. So immediately the person leaves. I say, "Honey, what do you think?" I said that guy is bad news. <laughs> I will not know, but I will have that at the back of my mind. Hmm. So I will start asking for details just to find out. Six weeks later, I'll find out that that it's guy true. is bad news. Uh. <laughs> so really, what you are bringing out is really crucial to actually protect us men. Women are more intuitive. And if you listen to them, you might think, ah, they don't know nothing. What do they know about business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, they, they are very intuitive and they can take you out of a lot of trouble. So, please, brothers, listen to them. Thank <laughs> you. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, you know what? Details, men are not into details, but the problem with us is that we are not so humble. So, the reason why I'm mentioning this is for the men to be more humble and to be more receptive and to, be more, to listen more to their spouses in that regard. Now, uh, another person is saying here, Anesthesia, she say, I've joked with my husband that the only time he will recognize change in me is when I shave off my head completely. <laughs> I become bad. <laughs> I become bored. That's when he will notice, because he doesn't notice all the miracles she's performing over her head. <laughs> Now you understand why he's seeing you that you are still the same. At least he not recognize you. <laughs> that is the major thing. You have not changed. As far as he's concerned, he's seeing the, the same wife. <laughs> as long as it is you who has gone. <laughs> okay, T.Y. is saying, even when Dr. Adelaja comes in, comes on, I can read his mood. Wow. I can read his mood from the tone of his voice, his emotions, that women are so deep. Their detail. Wow. Sometimes you will confirm it too. Okay. Olu is saying, Pastor, your color is actually coral. It's not red. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody say it's not blood as well. <laughs> But see what the man is seeing with my color coming. The only thing the man is seeing, see, the man is saying, Tim Dutton say, as a man, sir, the only thing I'm saying that you came on casual today. <laughs> the man is only saying that I came out casual today. That I didn't come out, you know, official as usual. <laughs> Oh, 
for his head. <laughs> so that is one thing that we need to learn from each other. And uh, uh, and I think, you know, because they are detailed, they are detailed. Sometimes we men things. Sometimes women think that they are petty. So we mistake detail to petty. But doesn't mean that they are petty or they are little or smallish or what they call petty again. What is another synonym for petty? That they are petty and smallish, sheepish. Trivial. Trivial, sheepish. But they are not sheep. They are not sheep, sheepish and they are not petty. You know, uh, they are wise. That's the way we should look at it. They are detailed. They are wise. They are intuitive. They, they get into the nitty gritty. And, you know, the devil is in the details, you know. It is the little, little things that you leave undone that spoils the thing. Like, for example, in Nigeria, a lot of houses are built that could cost millions. But the finishing touches are very bad. And what I discover is that they need to get more women into civil engineering and into building, into management, into planning, into housing. Into, when it comes to housing, building, everything, they just leave all that to the men. And so women, are, I mean men, are just building the big, giant structures as if it's a man's wall. You know, a man is about status, status, and it's about bigness, the vastness, to see how big it is. But women supposed to have been put into the industry, into the building industry of Nigeria, to help with the, uh, with, with the details of finishing touches, because in Nigeria, the finishing touches are bad. That's so bad. Okay. Another thing that we need to uh, know about each other, guys, is uh, another thing that we need to notice with each other differences is that men say what they think. Men only talk what is going on in their mind at this particular time. Why women say what they are feeling right now. So they are sh telling you more of their experiences. And the reason also is very clear. If you look at those pictures again, look, see. If the man, this is the, this is the, uh, this is the mind here. If the man is thinking, if the man is thinking, he's not feeling what he's thinking. This is feeling. He's not feeling what he's thinking. And he's not experiencing in the heart what he's thinking. He's just in his head. So when he's, think, when he's saying something, he's saying what he's thinking in his head. He's not connected with all the other functions of the, of the body. But the woman, anything she's saying or thinking... Is, uh, is going through all of her body. You see the pink? The pink is going all through her body. Emotions, feelings, is going all through her. So she's not just telling you the information that she's having in her mind. She, <laughs> she is communicating to you not just the information in her head, but what she's also experiencing with that information, or at that time. What she's experiencing in her emotions, in her feelings, and what is going on deep in her heart. So it's like men don't have heart when, it comes to, when you compare to the woman. That's why women are more sens sensitive. That's why they are more emotional. That's why they are more temperamental. That's why they are, you know, they, you know, they, they are more compassionate. And they seem to, you know, to take everything to themselves. They are more sensitive. And uh, they feel the pain easier and are more than the men. And, you know, they cry easier because they are experiencing the thing. And that's why they are demanding from you emotional involvement. Because they are experiencing what they are saying. They are not just saying what they are saying or they are not just saying what they are thinking. They are saying it and at the same time they are experiencing it. How does that work, Mrs. Shorunke? Is that true? Could that be true? We don't know that. You know, because in that spiral, you see that what the mind is wired together with the emotions and the feelings and everything. So she is saying it and feeling 
She knows what she's saying. She's feeling, but we don't even feel what you say. If you say, for example, if a woman comes to me and says, uh, uh, Pastor, you know, my, my, you know, anything just happened. My, I just lost, you know, okay, okay maybe my, my child or whatever it just happened or my car just broke or whatever. You know, it's an information for me. Oh, yeah, it broke. Ooh, okay, go and get a mechanic. Let's just fix it. Yeah, why not? What's the problem? So, you know, some women can cry because the car broke down. <laughs> or, you know, anything this like that. And, you know, or, oh, the water is not coming out today. Oh, no, not coming out. Okay, just get it. But for us, it's just information and that could be fixed. But for the woman, she's feeling something. In fact, she can cry at the same time. Why? Because that is leading to all kinds of emotions inside of her. Because the fact of the thing that happened is wired inside, you know, her feelings. So, how is that? Because when we talk, we're talking what is in the head like this. We're saying what has happened as a fact. But the woman also feel that fact. And then express it and say what they feel. Is that the situation? Yes, um, the way I see it is that we are gifted with feeling. You know, feelings are important because feelings can help you relate to certain situations. Yes, the men will go directly to the issue and say, okay, you know, this needs to be fixed. But uh, also what women do is that they're able to carry the the human uh, uh feeling of the issue um men may take care of the most important items but women deal with the where the feeling is come from the hearts of people if you listen sometimes to our conversations uh, to each other we say ah how did the person feel oh that must not have been a good feeling and that allows us to be able to relate to situations to people and uh, maybe that's why one of the biggest professions that we're in is uh, doctors, nurses, and so on, because we are able to sympathize, we're able to help, we're able to imagine what kind of uh, feeling that people can have, whether it be man, woman, a little girl, a little boy, we can relate to what they are going through, which is important to be able to help properly on issues. So feelings can be a blessing, but then, like you talked about, there's the emotional part. After going through a lot in the day, it could just be one little thing that, <laughs> one little thing that happens. Like you get home and part of your schedule was, okay, I'm going to quickly cook some soup. And you just realize like, oh, I don't even have the stuff to, yes. to cook with. And that could just be like a real bad feeling. Because you're thinking now, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to have guests, this and that. And, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be ready by the time I go out, by the time I come back. I'm going to disappoint everybody. This should be something that I should know, that I should do. So many a times the feeling comes up. Sometimes it could just be because of all the things we have gone through, through the day. And just one little thing and it could just make us just feel so low, so down, you know, and out of it. But then it's going to be another woman that she may talk to that will say, oh, it's not that bad. Don't worry. You know, I understand how you're going through. I've experienced that. I will come out. I will come and help you. Because that person knows the person needs help and understands. But the man will just say, how was your problem? Go and buy it now. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but the woman is going through disappointment. The woman, is, the woman has already planned how everything is going to work out. It's all going to be perfect and great. And then one little thing, which is not so easy to, to, to do right away, you're talking about time, you're talking about need. So with everything, it just, sometimes it just comes down to, gosh, I, I just, I'm so disappointed. But you know, um, the crying part um, on either side is a release. Um, a yes, it's a release. It's like it takes off the pressure, even though it's crying, but it just allows... A lot of stuff to just really come out so you can begin again you can begin your your journey again so i don't really necessarily but do you know that for the men that release comes through sexual release <laughs> it doesn't come through tears uh -huh. 
So that's so you can equivalent to that. That's that's a good way that women can release Understand. their feelings. So it shouldn't be looked at mostly as a negative. There's an issue if a woman is crying every day. That means that there's something that's really, really hurting her to be crying every day. But if she cries every now and then on something, it's, it's actually helpful. You actually feel better that you've sort of gotten that out of your system. Now you can figure out, okay, what do I do from here to get things back in motion? So it's just part of what we need to do sometimes just to get stuff out of our system. Mm. Okay, let's hear what your husband says about that. Well, it's, uh, it's actually very good to tune in to what to the topic we are talking about because in life, God, my wife always makes me understand that God does not make a mistake to create man and woman. And when he created us, he puts his virtues in both of us. So whether we see it differently with the woman, or we see the woman see it differently with the man, we are still learning the nature of God. And we need to listen to each other. For example, one of the things that I've come to realize is that not only is my wife more intuitive than I am, but it's more de- she's more detailed. For example, when we sit down at the dinner table and we're doing Bible study, anytime that we just decide that, okay, let's do Bible study, I will read a passage of the scripture and I will just give it a literary interpretation. And then she will say, do you see what I see in there? And I was like, yeah. Moses, <laughs> Moses left and went to the mountain to go and pray. What else is there? And then she would dissect how she how the Moses walked, how he could have done I was like, but that's not written there, he said, just imagine with me. <laughs> and many times when I begin to follow what she says, then she can take me on a journey to that mountain. Then I will clearly see her point. It might take two, three minutes for her to make the point that I will make in 30 seconds. But I've come to listen to her to really appreciate what she does. Another great example is when we go grocery shopping. My wife will call me. Honey, can you pick up bread, milk, and egg on your way home? I'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. So I want to go to the grocery store, pick bread, egg, and stuff. So she has now known me very well that I won't look to the right or left. So she will (laughs) write it down and text it to me. This is the kind of egg that I want. It's a brown egg. You'll find it on aisle 14. <laughs> it's in the freezer. Do not buy the double A egg. I mean, all those details are very important to our wife. So many times when I come <laughs> home, I just pick the egg, the first one that my hand sees, and she say, honey, you bought the wrong egg. Don't worry, I'll go back and chase how, it. How, how is it going to have a different egg? Well, they are different <laughs> because the double A, the organic, and the the yellow one, I didn't even notice that there's a sugar. <laughs> I just go to the freezer, I just grab one. She said, no, you won't find it on the top shelf. Just look very down to the bottom in the back. You will see that's the kind of egg that I eat. I was like, that's a different kind of egg. Those details, those, those details, I don't care. They don't care. To me, egg is egg. We need egg in the house. I just pick the double egg that I see the first one. So, many times, I am I have intelligence. I have a, a more than average intelligence. But she will tell me into details. She, when she first start doing that, I will tell her. I say, honey, I made it. She first start doing that. She's like, I'm not alive. I made it. Only when you start noticing that. Exactly. I'll be reminding her that, honey, I made it through medical school. At least give me some. But later, I realized that she's trying to do that to help me because I don't pay attention to details. So she she thinks that she needs to really spell it out. So I will buy the exact same thing that she wanted, like oatmeal. She will say, oh, get me some oatmeal. Please do not buy coca oats. There is another one that I really like. It is a small bottle, is this? So after a while, we discover something. She will take a picture of what I, what I want. I will, she will text it to me and say, this is exactly what you need to buy. Those things, as mundane as 
trivial it is, it will really improve your marriage. Because when I come home, exact same thing I should want is what I will buy. And it will really make a lot of difference. Because if she had planned to cook something, I have all the ingredients. So, as men, we need to really, really get off our high horse, begin to listen to our wives, and really work out something that we need to do so that we can actually improve our relationship. That's just the way they are made. They are not trying to disrespect you, but they believe that they have to give you the details. So listen and learn. Thank you, Pastor. Wow, wow, wow. I'm going to do something that's going to really help the men out here. Because this picture is what helped me greatly too. Now, I might need her. Uh, yeah, I might need yes. somebody's help, yes. Let me do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you help me hold this. Okay, this is what's happening here is people are choosing shampoo here. Shampoo. So this is man choosing a shampoo going in the shop. So he goes to the shop and picks a shampoo. And this is the shampoo. This is what the you know the answer of the man is that it's written shampoo there. So since it's written shampoo, I pick shampoo. But the girl, the woman is going to shoot shampoo. See what she's seeing. See look what he's looking at though. Shampoo is she's looking at the effectiveness. What is written there about the effectiveness of the shampoo? She's looking at the brand, she's looking at the smell. She's looking at what it does to the air. She's looking at the ingredients. She's looking at the color. She's looking at the quality. She's looking at the design. She's looking at the recommendations. She's looking at the reviews. She's looking at the quantity. She's looking at the popularity. See how many points she's considering. Let me, the same thing when she's going to buy eggs or when you are going to buy eggs. So those eggs, the reason why she knows that there are many eggs and chickens and we think chicken is chicken. <laughs> to us, that chicken is this. Look at the chicken. It says chicken. Or oh, it says egg. Or oh, it says cloth. So we just go and pick the shampoo. So this is a man choosing shampoo. And his argument is simple. You said I should buy shampoo. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> is it not shampoo that is written there? What's your problem? See, it says shampoo. And I bought it. But the woman, this also says shampoo. But besides shampoo, she's looking at the popularity. She's looking at the quality. She's looking at the reviews. She's looking at the recommendations. She's looking at the design. She's looking at the quality. She's looking at the color. She's looking at the ingredients. She's looking at the... E at the, what it does to the air. She's looking at the smell. She's looking at the brand. She's looking at how effective it is. So these different variations, this is how she makes all her decisions. Either it is shampoo she is buying or it is, uh, it is it, anything. Even this thing and now. I used to wonder why should they be putting all instructions? This is from this uh, you know, even water now, if it was water we want to buy, everything is there, the detail ingredients, what is in the water, I said water is water, what's your problem? Why should you be putting what is, how many grams of this is in this water, or you want to buy butter? If you want to even buy butter in the, they say, oh, this butter is from this, has this much fat, has this much this, has this much oil, has this, everything is detailed. And I, now I know it's because of women. It's because of women, they put all those. Even if you are going to buy meat now, they will say, oh, that meat has this much fat, that meat has this much, uh, this, this one has this much that. You see, the man is having an easy life. So one woman is like, the women don't have problem. I mean, men don't have problem at all. That's why you are thinking we don't have problems. Because you say we should go and buy shampoo, this shampoo will pick it, will come back home. And that's why we don't get lost in the shop. Have you ever tried to go and do shopping with your wife or with your sister or with your mother? 
Have we ever gone shopping before? And we, among ourselves, women are thinking that that is negative. Women are thinking that women are so, they are not serious. They waste time and we trivialize them. Instead of us uh, to, instead of us to honor them and to appreciate them and to praise them and to thank them for it, because those details have saved a lot of lives and those details can save lives. But we, we just laugh at them and say, you know, they are just, you know, wasting time and they don't know what they're doing and all that. But really, they even know more what they are doing than what we do. So the same thing with, with when it comes to shopping, instead of laughing at the woman and saying they are going to shopping and in the shopping something, they just waste all the time. And we, we were wondering before, if you ask any man now, why is a woman lost in the, in the mall? And what is the woman looking at? We don't know. We just think it, she's just going around and wasting time. She's not seeing anything. And we just think she's not even having any intention of getting anything in the first place. But she does because she's seeing all these things. So anything, anytime she goes to the store, she's not just seeing the shampoo, see all the colors she's seeing. But these are not just colors of the shampoo. These are variations. These are all questions that she asks herself. These are all things to consider. It's the same thing when she wants to buy a shirt. It's the same thing when she wants to buy a dress. It's the same thing when she wants to buy a shoe. It's the same thing when she wants to buy anything. She has so many things to consider. So, you see, she has to consider the brand. She has to consider the smell. She has to consider the, the way it works, the effectiveness. She has to consider the, what it does to the air. She has to consider the ingredients. She has to consider the color. She considers the quality, the design, the recommendations, the reviews, the quantity, and the quality, and the popularity. But the man just, ah, but it's written now. Can you see? It's, it's, you say I should buy shampoo, but see now. It's shampoo now. So we are, we are just straightforward. And that's one difference between men and women that we should appreciate in ourselves and in one another. Women are into specifics. They see different variations that we don't see. And that's why that color, I mean, that picture that I showed you in the beginning, it shows us how we see life. It shows us how we see life. You see, this is how men see life. That is all they see. And that is how women see life. Women see all those things between the lines. Women see all those details. Women are seeing all these other Pa factors that we are not saying. There are so many other factors in life that men are not saying. There are so many other things to consider in relationship, in your family, in business that women are not. Women are seeing that men are not saying. You see, that's why women will make a better ma better managers. That is why women will make you no know, better assistants. Women are going to be able to see so many other things that the men are not saying. Men, that's why you must give the right to the women to talk. We must give men, women the right to express their opinions. We must give them the opportunity to be able to tell us what they are seeing. And we must be able to listen to them. And as you see, that's the why, the, that is uh, why the women are seeing so many other options. And not just colors, but options as well. These are not just colors. These are also options. These are also details uh, that the men are seeing. I mean, the men are not seeing that the women are seeing. If you will learn to work together, we will discover that God made us that way and we should appreciate one another. We should appreciate uh, one another and use one another's strength to increase, to better each other. So if you have not shared this link, let's go ahead and share this link, please. Go ahead and look for the share button for this particular message. It might be able to help you improve your life and improve your relationship. Liar Emmanuel says, I sincerely think women should stop going to shop with their husbands. They will still not help you in making a choice anyway. They are either sitting down or giving you that look that spares isn't it enough?
I can't wait to get out of here. It only puts the woman under pressure to rush up with the shopping and probably leave dissatisfied. Wow. Okay. Women, I hope you're hearing. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for everything. It was nice being with you. Enjoy your day.